Welcome to Callous Coder. This is lesson two of Amiga Assembly. Motherfucker! So last lesson we created these two raster bars. Well, bars, more like little, little, little spaghetti things. It's not really a nice firm rod. And today we're going to spin those rods. Mm. So a little uh, housekeeping before we actually start. Um, I have not yet made a make file. So whenever you want to uh, run anything, because I don't want to create uh, a repository for every lesson. So what I'm currently doing is a bit of a hack. If you want to see a lesson, just copy that code from that lesson into the copper.s, right? And then when you run it, it will actually uh, assemble this copper and in the launch, that's why we do that trick, it will actually launch that copper uh, binary. So now we should have the same lesson as lesson one. That's also our departure point, right? I will eventually make a, uh, a make file, but I don't have a Windows PC and don't want to bother with a VM. I don't even have a Windows license to actually test that the make file will uh, do the copy correctly. And I hate to put out software that isn't tested. So for now, just copy the contents of your lesson on the copper.s run it and that you should be fine. So eventually what we create here in this copper, I will put in this lesson and we'll put the remarks there. So last time we created uh, two nice little bars that may be in need of uh, some Viagra to make them a bit wider. Does actually Viagra make your bar wider or only longer? Or just makes it stiff? I think the latter, right? Ah, there's somebody else that makes a tutorial about that. <laughs> That's not here. But today we're going to make these two bars rotate seemingly upwards. If you want to rotate them downwards, that's a good homework exercise. So how are we going to give the illusion that these bars rotate? Well, it's actually really simple. We should uh, copy all these colors. This one should go to the back and this one should go up, that one should go up, that one should go up, and that one should go up. Except that if we copy this already at the back, in this case it would work because now the two values are the same. When they're not, it doesn't really work. So the algorithm that we're going to do is we first going to safe keep this into a register. And let's use register D7. I tend to use D7 for uh, temp. And then we read this color value and we copy it up. We read this color value and copy it up. And read this color value, copy it up. Read this value and copy it up. And we can do this because this copper list is just data. Now, ironically, um, these are instructions for the copper. So we could even say we're actually writing self-modifying code because you are perfectly able to actually change uh, something runtime because this is in memory anyways and uh, the operands because well this is an instruction but this also is a byte instruction wouldn't know uh, the opcode but you could actually change this and runtime change your program and that is self-modifying code we have not really touched on it anywhere because generally it's frowned upon but uh, on the old bit 8-bit machines uh, the c64 and the MSX, I did that a lot self-modifying code. So let's create a uh, little subroutine. Let's call it rotate copper bar. You don't need the colons, but I like a colon. Okay, bars, colon, uh, this is really getting back bad. All right, and let's return from, and let's call that uh, before our mouse click. Here we wait for a mouse click to happen. So uh, every time the mouse isn't clicked, we can actually rotate our bar. So let's do that. So let's do a branch subroutine. Uh, we know it's a short jump, only uh, 128 bytes away. If you don't know, you can omit it. Then the um, assembler will figure it out for you. But we like to be explicit, right? And then we call rotate copper bar. But let's pass into a 
arguments. Let's set the address A0 to uh, where this copper bar starts. We could point it to copper list and figure out the offset. Uh, but then for the second copper bar, we have a different offset because we have this black instruction, weight instruction uh, in between. Or sorry, the, uh, not black instruction. Uh, uh, for waiting for the 255th line. So it would be a bit more complex. Uh, let's just introduce a new label. That's perfectly fine. This label doesn't compile. It's not an instruction, but it will actually uh, tell where this, or actually technically this byte is located in memory. Yep. And let's do this again. Where is my mouse gone? There, copper bar two. And I like a colon. So where copper bar one is pointed, we put that in A0. And then we actually need to also uh, tell how many lines to copy. And we're going to use a new instruction for this. It's called DBF. It's a decrement and branch until it's uh, uh, no longer positive. So this one we will actually copy in, uh, in a register. So we only need to copy one, two, three, four. And how decrement branch works, it will actually copy also the zero. So it's uh, four minus one, so three. So let's, uh, let's use a move quick. We already briefly talked about this. This is the quickest way to um, move a byte value into a register. It is the shortest, uh, shortest instruction. So move quick. So our D1 register is actually the width of our byte. So if we take some Viagra and we want our width to be wider, we can just uh, do five, add two more positions uh, here and have a wider bar. And who doesn't like a wide bar? And that will be a great homework exercise to, uh, to take some Viagra. Add a couple of extra colors in here and extra lines and uh, increment uh, this. So this will be uh, our Viagra register. All right, yes, so we branch to the copper bar and let's do the same for the second copper bar. This is copper bar one. So we can just copy it and point that to there. And we uh, need to set this again because this is uh, changed by our routine. All right, cool. So we can now actually implement it. Should be easy enough. So we're going to move a word because the color is a word. And we need to move this, uh, this one in memory. So one, two, three, four, five, six bytes away. So six bytes, oh, let's, six bytes from A0. Because remember we pass in A0 that points to the copper bar. So we're here, so one, two, three, four, five, six bytes away. And then we have that value. And we put that in D7 for safekeeping. Store first color for say safekeeping. And I uh, will fix this later on. I will do the rest of these uh, remarks later on. And then we need to move to the next, uh, or to actually the first instruction. So we are currently here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen bytes away. So we can just add the immediate value fourteen to a zero because a zero points to whatever this address is. We then add fourteen to it, and then it points conveniently to the first byte of this sixteen-bit address. And then we can make a Local label rotate, and I rotate it with a colon. I rotate it in the colon. Mm. <laughs> this is really getting bad. <laughs> All right, so we need to move this word, this 16 bits, so the dot W, into a, a register for say uh, to actually copy it. So let's use uh, 
D0 for it. So our A0 is now pointing here and we say move a byte into D0. So we're clobbering D0 here, perfectly fine. If you want to use a stack frame, you can actually do that, like we did over here. Um, in demo programming, you tend to be uh, very scarce with setting up stack frames because this takes relatively a lot of time, a relative lot of time. Um, so we're clobbering things here. Perfectly fine. If you want to use uh, a nice copy of all your registers, you have to... Uh, the, the rest of time available, then go ahead. We're not going to bother with this for sake of speed. All right, so we have now the value of this color in memory and we need to copy it there. So what is in D0? Let's uh, move that eight positions up from uh, A1, uh, sorry, A0. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So again, we pointed to the beginning. So basically, we copied this upwards. Easy peasy. And now we need to do this. Uh, oh, now we need to, of course, first move to the next uh, color. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, am I correct? One, two, three, four. Uh, oh, we're pointing here, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, we need to add eight because we were pointing here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. And then we point to the next color. Yeah. Add eight to a zero. So we're changing the pointer again, so now we're pointing to the next color. And we can just rotate this. And I told you already we're going to use a decrement uh, branch. And we're going to decrement uh, the D1 register. Remember, that's our Viagra register, the width. And as long as that's uh, positive, so including uh, zero, we will just jump to rotate. So we copied all these colors up and now what we have kept safely in D7, we need to put back at the back. So let's do that. Move word, what is in D7? We're going to put that in A0. Oh. And of course we already added eight to it. So we're way back. So we need to subtract that eight from it. So this should actually rotate it. We just copied everything up. And it does, yeah, cool. But it rotates a bit quick. Now you can generate from the copper list an interrupt on a certain uh, raster line. And you can count that interrupt and then wait that many lines. And we're going to do that in one of the next uh, videos. And that's an easier way than we're going to do now. But let's, for the sake of hardware programming, learn something that I also learned from that book, is the VH POS register. So let's do again uh, our move quick. So we uh, really instill this new great DBF routine. So this is uh, the number of frames I want to wait. So uh, basically two frames in this case. And do a V wait label. And now we can actually compare the byte. Uh, let's wait. If we run this, we are going to chase the beam. That is something that you do a lot in the demo and game programming. We want to wait until this point, halfway down the screen. So we have ample of time to actually uh, move these copper bars before they are actually drawn. Well, if we're halfway down the screen, we really have a lot of screen uh, time or rest of time left. Uh, because I think it's not even one, maybe two scan lines to do this. Uh, so yeah, let's wait halfway down the screen. And that is line AC. That's halfway down the screen. 
And then I told you about this VPOS register, VH POS register, a vertical horizontal position register. And it says position of the beam. That's the, uh, uh, the scan line, so to say. And in the top byte, we have the vertical position. Now, since this is a big engine machine, and in the lower, by, uh, lower word, sorry, it said byte, but it's the word. In the lower word, we have the horizontal position. Now, since this is a big engine machine, I can do the compare byte because that is the top part of it. So that works out nicely. And that is A5. We set everything of the system registers relative to A5. This is sort of programming convention. And as long as it's not on that line, so not equal, let's do the V weight. So we wait for the vertical position. Now, then we hit that vertical position, then we need to actually wait until it's completely drawn. So let's do a uh, wait line. And we can do again the same thing. We can just do a compare byte. Uh, com my goodness, compare byte. As long as we're on that same line, VH, a, uh, VH, Position register A5, then we're still on that line. So as long as we're equal, branch equal, then we just branch a byte length away, maximum to weight line. All right. So basically now we just wait uh, one scan line. Let's show that. We have not yet dealt with this, but that should be fine. See, still uh, going one scan line at a time. And let's do the decrement and branch again. DB, let's decrement one. And we jump to V weight. So this is set to one. So it waits one position, then it's set to zero, waits it. So basically we're slowing down with two frames and you will actually see that it's, uh, it's now slowed down. We can actually slow it down even more. If you like it slow, then uh, yeah, you do it slow. If you like it fast, you do it fast. See? Yeah, maybe I like this aesthetically the most. Uh, yeah. So we got rotating bars, people. This is, is how easy it is. So there you have it. We created the illusion that the bars are now spinning. As a homework exercise, I would actually advise you to create more lines and make that bar uh, a bit firmer, you know? Add some Viagra to it and make that spin. And that should be a great uh, exercise. If you really want to take it further, you could actually create a table in memory with all the steps of the raster bar and create the weight instructions and the colors automatically. You should have that basic knowledge with all this stuff that we just learned now to actually do that uh, from a table. In the next episode, we will actually create one wider bar because, you know, we like a wide bar and we're going to move it up and down on a sinusoidal path. Mm. So see you in the next one. Now that's the Dutch windmill dick trick.